Hello folks, this is the Apara 5K, which has the latest firmware. What that means is that I'm running 5K at 70 hertz. Also, I'm using the Steam VR tracker, so I'm pleased to say tracking is absolutely brilliant. Uh, also, I am running the DisplayPort Cable 1.4, and we're here in Las Vegas, and I'll explain why in a bit. But this is going to be my sort of final verdict, conclusion, whatever you call it, review of this headset, having used it now for quite a number of weeks. In fact, I've had it over a month now, I think. Uh, and I've had all sorts of uh, sort of interesting problems to overcome. I want to say thank you to Apara for providing me with this headset and also giving me a lot of uh, sort of technical support as well as Sebastian from MRTV. He's been a legend. So if you're watching this, which you probably are, thank you, mate. Really do appreciate it. It's been a bit of a difficult one. And uh, yeah, uh, for instance, you might notice on the camera that I've got a weird long lead here, uh, like a loop thing. What on earth is that? Well, it, that's not what it's going to look like when you get yours. Basically, I had a dodgy lead that goes from the Steam VR tracker to the headset. It took me ages to figure that one out. So I, I just grabbed uh, a quick sort of lead off Amazon in as quick as possible just so I could get the headset working and really there's been a few issues with software as well sometimes I'll be flying like this and the headset will just go off completely um, and it there's a certain method to getting it running in Microsoft Flight Simulator you have to, you know you have to have Steam VR running first otherwise it's just not going to work the sim will crash and you'll have to start it all over again so trust me guys i've had so many issues with this headset unfortunately however this is a sort of pre-production experimental version of it it's not the final release version and i'm sure those kind of kinks will be sorted anyway let's get into the nitty-gritty here what are the good things and bad things and what is my verdict well first of all let's talk about the party piece of this headset that is the micro oled technology as i say i'm running 5k oled i have always wanted and i think i voice this for everybody I have always wanted an OLED VR headset with a high resolution. I didn't think we were, you know, even in 2022, I wasn't sure if it was going to happen, you know, at consumer level, but it, it most definitely is. Uh, and I'm pleased to say Apara are the very first company to really bring this to market. What is it like? You know, what is it like running a OLED screen? at 5k at 70 hertz well it's absolutely amazing guys at the moment i can see right to the horizon this is the difference okay because this is also it has pancake lenses it doesn't have fresnel based lenses with concentric rings so that means i can see the far distance super super clear it really is a very very nice display um one thing i am a little bit disappointed with i have to say and that is a sweet spot. I'm so used to the Vario Aero now that I thought maybe pancake lenses would be very similar. But no, there's definitely a sweet spot range. It's bigger than pretty much any other Fresnel based headset, don't get me wrong. But it's still not that great, I don't think, personally. I don't know whether it's this design of this headset or pancake lens designs in general. I'm not quite sure there. It's still adequate, it's still fine, but it doesn't blow you away. And I want to say, right, straight away, anybody who wants to know is this as good as the Vario Aero? No, it is not, okay? Uh, in any respect, I think the only thing this beats it is probably the form factor being so light, but mainly the OLED screen, okay? This has perfect blacks, and that is why we are here at Las Vegas. However, bear in mind, this headset is also a damn sight cheaper. So they're the good things. The display is beautiful. There's no getting away from it. It absolutely is gorgeous in this thing, uh, especially for how light it is as well. However, folks, it's not all good news here, I'm afraid. So since getting the firmware update, uh, the brightness levels have increased from 68 nits to 97 nits, so about a 30% increase. I haven't really noticed the screen any brighter. It probably is a bit brighter, but it's not enough for me to be really impressed by it uh, and also i think a byproduct of that brighter screen is that i notice some color distortions uh which how can i describe it like in the upper portions of the display it's very brown like the sky at the moment right over here okay at the sort of my sort of forward view and up from the mountains that's blue but it grad gradually gets about sort of about there where you can see that little bit of cloud and the moon it's brown um which 
it's yeah not good at all to be honest there's other things as well that i have noticed uh with the display itself there is definitely god rays which i'm surprised about again being pancake lenses you just don't get any any lens sort of uh flare at all from the aero uh, being a spheric lens and it seems like that's the case now whether that's just again this particular headset or whether it's just pancake lenses in general this could be a glimpse into the future of what we're going to expect from other manufacturers and if that is the case there needs to be more work done okay i'm back again guys um the headset decided to crash um, I'm getting this a lot, which has made making this little video so difficult. <laughs> I'll tell you that now. Anyway, so what I'm going to now show you is the absolute party piece of this headset, okay? This is what makes it absolutely stunning. And this is why we are at Las Vegas today. Or, indeed, tonight. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Right, okay. This is amazing. This is when I start smiling my head off. Oh my goodness me. Pure OLED blacks in Las Vegas. And we're going to get a bit lower down now. Um, in this headset is incredible, as is Elite Dangerous. Anything where you need dark colours uh, or, you know, deep, rich colours. The Apara 5K wins, without a doubt. Now, only you can decide if that particular, you know, feature of this headset is really important to you. There's no doubt about it that flying at night is absolutely incredible. It really is an almost spiritual experience at times in VR. Um, as you can see here, this is just, it's mind-blowing. I'm actually finding it hard to talk right now because I'm that inc just amazed by this scene. And this is by far way better, you know, as you'd expect in the OLED-style headset. But to me, that's only part of the flying experience. And to be honest, I don't really fly at night all that much. Um, and for me, that's, it's not a big enough factor for me when a lot of LCD headsets, even the Revo G2, but particularly the Aero, are pretty good at night. They're good enough, but it won't wow you. Not like the Apara 5K, no doubt about it. One other thing I want to mention about this headset before I forget, because I generally don't think about this because I don't wear glasses. In fact, none of my family do either. Um, but uh, people who do, this headset has a diopter adjustment on each side, which means you can dial in your prescription. I think that is something that every VR headset should have. It also has a manual IPD adjustment as well. Um, so there is a lot to like in that respect as well. Now, the brightness issue, I've been asked so many times about this. Is it a deal breaker? Well, um, when you see the likes of the reverb and the vivid colors of that headset in the in the sort of daytime and of course the aero on another level completely um, and then you go back to the apara it is quite a difference actually and uh i think for reverb g2 owners i really don't think this is worth the upgrade hand on heart please just keep your reverb g2s unless there's a real specific reason why you want the apara whether it's that micro OLED technology or the form factor, which is obviously incredibly light. This thing only weighs about 200 grams, although it does weigh a little bit more with the Steam VR tracker um, and it gets a little bit hotter, I think, as well, but not by a massive amount. Uh, but it is worth mentioning, you know, if those things are important to you, then fair enough. But, you know, the Reva G2, my God, that headset is still the best for, you know, uh, flight simming. Um, I'm not going to say on a budget because actually the Quest 2 is better uh, for that. But I think for a high-end VR headset with all the features that you could possibly want, the Reva G2 is still a better proposition than this. And it's from a safer manufacturer. Nothing against the par at all, but they're, at the moment they're not proven. It's still a Kickstarter. There is a, an element of risk there, okay? So really, uh, what else can I say about this headset? Well, I want to talk about the build quality. I think the headset itself, the main design of it, the body of it, is about the same as a Rift S, okay? That's not to say it's uh, terrible, but it's not brilliant either. 
Um, but what I don't like is this head strap, this sort of elite style head strap. Uh, it's very flimsy. It can kind of come off the size a little bit. So I wouldn't recommend this. I think they, you know, hopefully it'll be a better option out there at some point. Uh, also the face, facial interface here, it's actually starting to hurt my face a little bit and I get a massive red mark. Um, so please, if you are looking at getting the Apara 5K, opt in for the, uh, the upgraded facial interface, which I haven't tried. I haven't got that with me yet. Um, it does look a lot better than this though. So really, can I recommend this headset? Given the fact that it's a Kickstarter, that there's a lot of problems with it still and the display has issues with colors you know sort of uh, the distortion on the upper portions that i mentioned about you know that brownish color and, and also of course the brightness isn't is what i would want it to be personally i don't i cannot recommend this guys to most of you i, I don't think for most people on the channel they've either got a quest 2 or reverb d2 they're better headsets than this at this point in time uh, and honestly, I think Apara, please keep doing what you're doing. Um, this is a very exciting future for VR, and I think Micro OLED with the pancake lens design is very, very, uh, what's the word, desirable. And it is a desirable headset in many ways. I just don't think we're there yet. I don't think that. Um, and if things change, if they give me a new firmware update, if they're able to tweak those colors, tweak the software, make this a better proposition, then I will come back to this video and rethink it. But at the moment, I can't recommend it. I really can't, and I'm gutted because there's lots to like, but there's too much not to like about this headset. And that is, it does have a small sweet spot for pancake lens design. I don't really like the colors in the daytime. Don't really like the brightness. Um, I think, what else uh, did I say as well? Um, I think the build quality is a bit iffy as well. It tends to crash quite a lot, but particularly my unit anyway. It doesn't always work very well. It's uncomfortable, even though it's really light because of the facial interface. Um, did I mention there's uh, God Rays as well? I probably did, I can't remember. I'm kind of losing where I am a bit here. But um, one thing I do like about it, actually for a 5K, headset the performance is absolutely brilliant i can use my nvidia shadow play broadcast camera and still fly with 35 frames per second in an area like this so the performance is really good however there is no motion reprojection support that is another big thing for i mean everything to be honest but mainly for flying low down i do feel motion reprojection is a thing that needs to be added in Admittedly, you know, a lot of people on this channel don't like motion reprojection. So again, that's a personal thing. So to cut it short, guys, and then I'm going to fly off into the distance. I love what Apara are doing with the 5K, but I think there needs to be uh, more improvements before I can recommend it to my viewers. Um, so if you have pre-ordered this, just have a think about some of the things I've been talking about and how, you know, what's important to you when flying. If you like doing this kind of thing, my God, this headset is absolutely awesome. But uh, I think as an overall package, it's a bit of a risk, if I'm honest. I will be still showcasing the Apara 5K in videos in the future, particularly as uh, if anything changes, I will certainly uh, keep you updated. And by the way, before I go, um, this helicopter I'm flying is by the Hype Performance Group. I've got a review on the channel. It's the H145. I'm flying the uh, latest beta, which is beta 8. And this has transformed the way I think about helicopters in VR. And I absolutely love flying this thing, like all the time. <laughs> and links for this aircraft will be in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate your support. And I'll see you all again very soon. Take care and bye for now.